everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really cute hexagon little gift bags. So you can see how they look there. You can have the strap longer or you can lift it up so it's like doubled up. And then you just lift up this one here which has got a Velcro closure and then inside you have this really roomy gift box or gift bag. You don't have to have the handle so then you can make it more into a box. Everything is really neat, really concealed. It's very straightforward to make. You've just got to make sure you get your lines lined up. But other than that, I think I've broken it down enough. And uh, yeah, I was really pleased with how these ones turned out. So I've got the green one and then I've got this red one here. Again, I've kept the rose gold throughout and then this Ponsettia on the front. I might not do that on this one. But again, you can see inside that one there. And it folds down. You've got the bottom, you can put the pattern paper all the way around if you want. That was non-directional paper, this is directional with the stag, so I didn't bother putting one on the bottom because um, I thought you don't see it anyway. But I think they're really cute and um, I've got one more to make today because I want three of these. So let me show you how to make them. Okay, so I'm using the First Edition Winter Rose. I've used this for a couple of other tutorials as well. It's a really nice collection. I mean, I love, it's very rare that I don't like any of the First Edition paper pads. They're all just so nice and different. And uh, this one's just got some just really nice colours through it. It's a lot richer. So I am using today the Christmas trees and I'm using black and I very rarely use black. And I thought actually it looks really nice against the black. So that's what we're using today. I've got some nice ribbon there. It's actually a ribbon I've had a long time. I've used it on the green one that I showed you just now. But I thought I'm going to use it again. So I'll go through all those bits in a second. First of all, we'll talk about the main cards. They're my Velcro dots for later. Okay, so you want a piece of cardstock that's 12 by 9.5. I'm using my little cardstock, so the default width of that is 9.5. So you just want to trim a little bit off the edge, because I know a lot of you have got that. Okay, so along that 12 inch side, you want to score at 1 and 7 eighths of an inch, 3 and 3 quarters, 5 and 5 eighths of an inch, seven and a half, nine and three eighths of an inch, and 11 and a quarter. So you'll have a three quarters of an inch piece at the end, which is gonna be that little lip where we add the Velcro dot. Then pop it on its nine and a half inch side and you wanna score, do mine the right way. So you wanna score it two inches and seven and a half. So you'll have these two by two squares all the way down each side and then you'll have these little rectangles and that piece at the top. Okay, so that is all the scoring that you need. You might as well as well cut your paper. I'll give you the measurements while I've got my scoreboard out. You want five or six pieces, depending, again, you know, if you want to cover all the sides, but again, this is another directional cardstock. It's the Christmas trees. So I only need five for these. I'm not going to put one on the bottom, but these are one and five eighths of an inch by five and a quarter. So I've got five pieces of that size. And then to do the hexagon shapes for the inside, you want to make a template first, which I'll talk you through. So just get a piece of white cardstock, but then you also want to cut four pieces. That's if you want to cover inside. I do think it looks nice and um, you'll see once I start doing it, I think you'll want to cut four, but you need four pieces of three and one eighth of an inch by three and five eighths of an inch. So I've got that lovely one there. And then two little pieces here, again, optional if you're going to do the little handles. It doesn't matter if you don't have these D bar rings because you can also use just cut some you know circle dies and then cut a smaller circle inside so you've got some rings and stick them on top of each other and it'll give you that similar kind of effect. You can also cut these on your digital machines but they're very inexpensive to pick up and you can also use the key ring, the circle one, so it doesn't have to be a D ring. But I picked these up from the works a while ago, I've got quite a few bags of them. So whatever the width is inside is what you want your width of cardstock to be. So mine here is just under three quarters of an inch. So if you've got these same ones from the works and that's the measurement you want to go for. And then the width is one inch and I'm just threading it through there and I'll stick that down like so. And it just gives us that nice decorative piece. And that's what I like adding to handbags. I love doing all the metal work. Okay, so now what you want to do is just fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, and then we need to do some cutting. So what you want to do first of all is, it doesn't matter which side, but you're going to work along one of the long sides and you're going to cut up every single score line to the first score line. So I'm just cutting up to this one here. So do that all along here and all along that side there.
Okay, so you'll have something like that. Then the two smaller ends here, just cut out, but don't cut a wedge like you usually would do. Keep it nice and straight, because that's actually going to be that flap on the front. So, and again, cut that there. And then these two here, just cut half of it off. You'll probably cut some more in a minute, but just for the minute, just cut half off, just so you know, you know, that that's your top, that's your lid, this whole section here. All the rest of this is the, the casing for the bag. Okay, so what's going to happen, we're going to bring all this around and that's going to be the lid and all these pieces here, apart from that one, are all going to stick in to form our hexagon. Now the easiest way to get this hexagon kind of shape is, we'll start with this end, so pop them off so they're out like that and this one here and you're going to work, I always say work with opposites, so just pop that around as if it's, you know, joined together. So this shorter one here, the opposite to that one, is this one here. So that's going to be our base of the, the bag. So you want to fold that one completely back and fold that one back. Put a little cross on there if you, you know, worried you're going to get mixed up. You're going to work on these four here. Doesn't matter which one you want to do first, but you're going to fold one in. And then I'm going to grab some, I'm going to use... I use this glue, I've got quite a few of these, so I'm gonna. This is the Cosmic Shimmer um, acrylic glue. It was another good one, I recommended this in my glue review. So I'm just going to. I've just unblocked it, oh, there we go. So I'm just gonna pop some glue just on the ends here. Oh gosh, more fingers and thumbs. Let's start again. I don't think this is coming out properly, that's why. Right, anyway, there we go. And then you're gonna pop this one across and you're going to stick it on there and you want to make sure that you get it lined up with the sides so both sides doesn't matter if there's more glue on there because it's all going to be stuck on top of each other in a minute and I'd say use a liquid glue because you are going to wiggle it around a little bit okay but now, now that's stuck then this one here is going to come across and stick and as long as you keep the sides straight the hexagon shape will naturally kind of form so don't panic that you're not going to get it all lined up. You've got to keep these straight. Keep them straight, everything else will fall into place. So now I'm going to bring this one across and I'm just going to pop a bit of glue in there just so that this one can stick to it. Okay. And then I'm going to pop a bit of glue on top. And then I'm going to lay this one down. And again, you want to line up the sides so it all sticks. Now, flip that one right back and if you get a ruler and pop it underneath you'll be able to push against that and just the key to this is keeping all of these straight but can you see now we've already started to get our hexagon shape now this top one when you lie it down you want it to fill that space so if you were to pop that inside can you see it joins up I could probably come in a little bit on that one I'm just going to move that one in a little bit there we go that's better can you see there where it meets up and that I would use as a gauge because when you want when this comes down to close, you want that to close along there perfectly. Okay? And then this one here, just bring it up, but you can see now that they lie they line up perfectly with, with each other. So if they were to stick together, and that means you've got a perfect hexagon. So it's all about keeping these side pieces straight and lined up with each other. So again, I'm just going to pop some glue down around here kind of around there. We're going to be covering all of this as well so don't worry too much of what it looks like. Just stick all that down there and again just go in with my ruler. Stick that. Now I'd say make sure that's completely dry before you start on the other end just so it doesn't pop open or anything like that. Okay so I'm really not worried about all that because I've already cut some of these but I'm going to show you one but when that goes over the top can you see how nicely that is going to frame there. It's going to look really pretty. So now I'm going to go to this end. You just want to do the same, but already it's kind of in its shape because of the one that you've done below. But you do want to make sure you stick all the right ones down. So again, the one that's opposite the short one, which is this one here, I'm just pushing right back. Get that out of the way. I'm just working on these four here. So I'm going to bring that one down. And again, just pop some glue that opposite one down and then pop some glue in here and then that one just move it around a bit put my ruler in underneath and again bring that one across and you want that to close 
so I need to bring that in a little bit more. So I'm just going to lift that up, just bring that across. Just make sure that, yeah, there you go. When this comes down, this score line here wants to line up with the top there, just so you can see it completes that hexagon look. But that's why it's good to use the liquid glue because you do have that time to wiggle it around. And again, I'm just going to put some glue just around there. And stick all that down. Okay, so now we've got a hexagon. Now these pieces here, you'll find, won't go in because you need to take a bit off. So you want to do quite a heavy kind of wedge on these, but I would also cut it a little bit shorter. So I've got it more so it's three quarters of an inch. Okay, and then I'm going to cut a nice big wedge off of each side because you want it to be able to go in and then not catch on this side. But now when that closes, you see that closes up nicely. So again, on this side here, if you want to make sure you're getting the same, use these triangles and sit them on there so you know where you're cutting. But again, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit and take a nice big wedge. Like so, and again, and it stops the bag kind of popping open, but also it stops you seeing what's in there. Even though we're going to be, you know, adding the paper and everything else, you'll see when it all comes together. If you were to cut that away completely, it just wouldn't look so good. But now you can see I've got a nice finish there on my hexagon, and that is going to have a magnet. Or yeah, you could have a magnet. I'm going to put Velcro just to close it up there. Okay, so next we need to start decorating. So the easiest way, because you want to decorate the sides, and then I've already given you the sizes for your all your mats for the, each of the panels there, but you want to make a hexagon. So I gave you those sizes, which were three, was it three and five eighths by three and one eighth? Yeah, okay. And what you want to do is you're going to make a template. So first of all, I'd say do this on some white cardstock, okay. I'm doing it on this because obviously I've already got my template here. So along your short side, you want to mark at the centre, so at the middle. So we've got three and one eighth, so it's just over one and a half. Okay, it's that like sixteenth of an inch, but you just want to mark halfway. So mark a pencil there and there. And then along the long side, on the top and the bottom, you want to come in seven eighths of an inch. Seven eighths, yep, seven eighths. Yep. You want to come in seven eighths of an inch on all of those corners and mark a pencil mark. And then you're going to cut from the center of this one to that one. So that's seven eighths of an inch. Oh. So you can draw a pencil line if you want to join them up. So I'll just show you there. So, okay, you can do it that way and then cut down. But always cut away the pencil because you would have made it slightly bigger when you draw around it. And then I'm just going to line that one up. And then that last one. You're going to have four of these, but like I said, that for you will be your template. And then I've just put hex gift bag and I pop that with all my other templates. So when I need to make one of these again now, I've got that ready to go for that particular size. But now I've got my four pieces. So you're going to stick them on the sides then. You should have a slight little border. You see that? It looks really nice. So you're going to do one on each side and inside. And then you're going to stick all of your mats and layers down if where well, you may be having layers, I've only got the mats, but I'm going to stick all them down. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to bring in my collout just because this dries nice and stiff, so I want it to be nice and strong. So I'm going to get them all stuck down. Okay, so that's all that stuck down. You can see inside how much neater it looks if you do add them both. Now, if you do want to conceal these ends, then I would stick them down and then stick the other one in. But because this is only a, a cardstock and that's quite bulky, I think you would see like gaps. So I actually don't mind that being stuck on like so. I think it all looks like, you know, it looks nice, it looks like part of the handbag, you know, when you look at your handbags you can see all that kind of thing, so anyway, but now it should, if you pop the sides in, once we add our 
blue dot there is just a nice gift box if you want to keep it that way you can put a nice big bow on top but I do like to make a little handbag and I haven't made one for a while so I'm now going to stick these pieces on so there's one that I hadn't curled so just grab your you know bone folder or pencil or ruler and just curl that it will just make it a bit easier for you I've got my hot glue ready I'm just going to put a little bit there thread that through and then just see what's your fingers but it's only a small amount but now you've got that nice and that can move freely there little detail so I'm just going to do that one okay so now I'm gonna I'm thinking I'm not going to do the poncettia on this one I'm going to do something maybe with that but I'm going to get these stuck down first so I just want to put a very thin bead of glue there just along the bottom and then you just want to stick it quite close to the top oh without it falling off that's okay there we go so you want it to you know be above you don't want it to catch because if you put the d ring too close to this here it will kind of just it make this hard to close in because you want that to be able to almost pop underneath it see like so and it'll kind of keep it shut itself and then you see a little bit of that detail poking out the top it looks nice that's popping out because this one's not down but it does kind of lock it in so it all helps when you go to close it so again another thin bead there just sit that one I always love it when I make the bags because I love to see your versions. So I always say it and I put it on my blogs, but if you haven't, head over to Mixed Up Crafters. It's a page dedicated to this YouTube channel. So anything that you make that's inspired by my tutorials, you can share them there. So many in that group now and I love it. I've just been seeing like the advent calendars have been amazing, all the different gift bags. It's just so nice. I love to see how other people's brains kind of work with like design and stuff. And it's just such a lovely group. So yeah, head over there if you haven't, but now, We've got that and then if you just pop that inside see it kind of sits underneath it like wedges itself underneath those bits so yeah it's like a self-closing now I guess okay then I've got my velcro we do that bit see I don't think I even need to do that bit because I'm gonna do yeah I like that because it really pops so let me just bring in this one just to tell you if you do want to do this strip you want something that's the full width which is five and a half and then the width of that is half an inch that's that strip there and then the poncettia is using the smaller one from the, the Helen Griffin. So this is the ultimate poncettia die set. This is um, Simply Made Craft, sorry. So it's, I've just used two of that size, which is, yeah, this one here, to make that little one. But for this here, I'm using the Bright Rosa Sprigs and Twigs. And it's this lovely long one, but I've just used like the edge there. But it is pretty. And I'm going to do something. I might not use that sentiment yet, I'm not sure. But I'm going to do like sprigs coming off because this is the reverse side of that print so it all kind of matches together and I might put some red berries on this do those ones a bit shorter put some red berries in the middle yeah so you'll see that I'll pop that on high speed but I'll just use my hot glue for that and then to attach your ribbon you just want to thread it through thread it through bring it around it depends on how long you want it this is just probably about 24 inches and then I'm just going to tie a bow like so and then what I'm going to do is you'll see on here is I've put the little faux metal detail on the edge so whatever the width of your ribbon is you want to cut your cardstock but by that length and then I've got about a quarter of an inch on each side so do it by half an inch so I'll do that and I'll add that on but all you want to do is make sure your ribbon is straight on the edge so I'll just trim those so I've got nice straight edges but it just ties it all together so I'll, I'll find I've got like a bronzy colour mirrored cardstock for this one I used the rose gold that was there and just tied it in that way but for this one I'll find something but now look how cute it looks and then you can have it longer like so. So I'm going to stick all that down, I'm going to do my little metal details there and then I think we're pretty much done.
Okay, so I've done that, and then I just want to add a Velcro dot. So these are 10 mil hook and loop. Well, they're not. These are Velcro brand, actually. So I'm just going to pair those together. Again, I will link this all below. I've got so many of those ones. But I always get the 10 or the 20. That's what you'll see me use. I'm going to stick the pair on the top there. I'm going to make sure that's all in. Bring that one down and just stick that one in there. There you go. I think they look really, really nice. I'll do gift tags and stuff later on, but um, for now, that's uh, yeah, what I need. So I've got my three. So I've got the two with the Ponsettias, and then that one's got a much longer strap. So again, depending on the style you want to go for, you know, you can have it either way. That's the same ribber but shorter. But then you've got the longer way there. So I love the berries actually. Against with the red there, I didn't go for the mirrored. I just done the red card and just to tie in with the berries. I thought it looked quite nice. I love that little kind of cluster there. It looks really cute. And then you've got the mirrored card on those ones. Yeah, I really like them. I love working with the hexagon shape. It's really fun. And hopefully you found this one, you know, easy to follow and um, enjoyed it. So thank you for watching. If you did enjoy today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Bye.